Hey everybody, welcome back to Heat My Shorts. I know it's only been like, I don't know, a couple days, maybe three days since our last flight, but I felt like doing another one. I'm really enjoying how easy it is to get into a flight now that I have this permanent flight simulator set up. It's not exactly professional quality setup, but it works really well for me and, and the price was right. So. I'm gonna have a seat in my pilot's chair here and tell you what we're up to today. This is episode 30 of Flying Across Canada. I hope you've been having a good day. Climb into my spot here, climb over the gadgets and the controls, and get settled into my chair. Alrighty. So, today we are back at Melville Municipal Airport in Saskatchewan. The code here is Charlie Juliet Victor Niner. Today we are in a Diamond DA40 NG. We'll be heading 46 nautical miles north northeast and arriving at Kenora Airstrip. That will be our final stop in Saskatchewan. The code there is Charlie Juliet Romeo 7. It's an estimated 19 minutes in the air, and I have made a note in my notes here to actually use the timer on the new flight system today, because I forgot last time. So, uh, actually I'll keep my notepad handy, because I will need it for aircraft fact time once we get into the air. I'll show you the aircraft from the outside here. This is the DA. 40 NG. I've actually flown another Diamond aircraft earlier on in our journey. It was a twin engine airplane that otherwise looked very similar. It has a very similar tail with that T-tail and the little the little fin winglet deal hanging down there and, and the wingtips as well. It's just a very similar looking plane, very recognizable as a Diamond aircraft. So let's head back to the inside and get ready for takeoff. Actually, I should check my flight controls first. I have not done that yet. There we go. Those seem to be working. All right. I have reconfigured some of my controls. It turned out that my sensitivity settings were a little bit off and that's what was running me into trouble. How I kept running out of um, steering, essentially. Anyways, Let's release the parking brake, uh, hit our timer right as we throttle up, I suppose, and uh, get your seatbelts fastened for takeoff, please. Let's do this. Stressful. Stall, stall horns going off a little bit there. Now I am going to level the flaps. There we go. Now our speed is increasing. Slowly get our heading aligned. There we go. Stall alarm is now shut off. We're all good there. And more or less aligned with our heading. Check something here. All right, so speed is slowly increasing now. Turn off our landing lights, and I think that is it for our. There we go. For our 
takeoff cycle. Um, now I'll tell you a little bit about this aircraft. Got my notes ready here. The Diamond DA-40MG, also known as the Diamond Star, is an Austrian four-seat turbo diesel single-engine light aircraft. Its first flight was November of 1997, and it's been in production ever since. Uh, it's built both in Austria and in Canada, and as of December of the year 2020, there have been 500 of the NG, or next generation diesel models, produced. Let's get our heading corrected a little bit more here. Alright, so the cruise speed is 136 knots, the maximum altitude is 16,400 feet, the range is 940 nautical miles, the length of the aircraft, nose to tail, is 23 feet, the wingspan is 39.2 feet, uh, it does have fixed landing gear, in a tricycle configuration. So there's three of them instead of two. If there was two and then a small wheel at the back, it would be a tail dragger. Those are their uh, their nicknames. And that's about all I have for facts on this thing. Get our speed dialed up a little bit here. Still just cruising at 70 knots. I'm not sure why it seems to be going so slowly. I'm actually going to adjust my rudder, or no, my elevator pitch, because it wants to nose down on me. There we go, that's a little better. Oh, well, a little much. There we go, I'd say that's about good. Yeah. All right, so I'll look around the aircraft, I guess. I haven't shown the aircraft at all. Nice little airplane for sure. Nice visibility all around. That's very nice. Nosing up a little bit again. These open? Nope, can't open these. It's always funny when there's features like this and you just can't use them, but Maybe, the, maybe that's an upgrade. Maybe I can download that. I'm, I'm not really sure. But anyways, yeah, nice little airplane. It's got the, the center-mounted stick, which is funny because I just changed mine from being center-mounted stick to a, a left-hand stick, but that's all right. There's lots of, well, there's quite a few different configurations of uh, controls, I suppose. Take it to the outside. A little bit louder, but nicer view. A lot of farmland around here. Just kind of getting to the the edge of Saskatchewan, I suppose. This will be our last our last landing in Saskatchewan, I suppose. Getting a little bit of low-laying clouds here. Doesn't look like there's any storms or thunder through them, so I think we're okay. Don't need to worry about ice or anything. Substantially quieter in here. Definitely. It's pretty cool little plane though, I don't know. Jet A powered. That's what it says on the tip of the wing there. Jet A powered. Interesting. Say the same thing on the other side. Imagine if it said Jet B power. <laughs> well, I wonder what Jet A power is. Maybe the, the turbo system for the for the diesel motor. The diesel motor actually. I thought I made a note of this, but I guess I didn't. Uh, the diesel motor is actually based off of a Mercedes Benz diesel motor, which is quite interesting. We are way off course here, but we're actually almost back to our course trajectory line. So yeah, I totally meant to do that. Yeah. 
basically flying by instrument here because I cannot see the ground at all. I could do this actually even. It's actually pretty awesome that we're able to fly by instrument like this. Like it's almost easier to be honest to fly by instrument. See much out here. Get that put away. I suppose you can see what other what other views are included in this airplane. I do like this one. Oh, that's awesome too. That'd be tricky to land like that. I should try that sometime. Maybe not on this video, but sometime. Well, it looks like we're pointed way up all of a sudden now. Well, maybe we are. Oh, that's cool seeing the flaps work like that. Or not the flaps, the... I can't think of the word right now. Ailerons? Is that the ailerons? I forget. to my yoke timer. Maggie's having a nap actually on her bed. She's not using it as a pillow. She's actually laying on it. Curled up. She looks very cute actually at the back of the plane. Not, not in the office. <laughs> I don't think that joke's ever going to get old. Sorry. Not sorry. Interesting, um, I guess we're not at full throttle. It says the cruise speed of this is 136 knots. Right now we're at 85 knots. So it seems like we could be going quite a bit faster, I guess. I wouldn't mind going faster, I like to go fast. <laughs> That's okay, I guess. This is not the fastest aircraft in the game. Not even close. So, we're about, I don't know, a third of the way through our journey. Coming up on YQV. I'm not sure what YQV is. Looks like it's an airport. We could look it up. Let's do that. I'm gonna look it up. I'm curious about what YQV is. Yorkton Municipal Airport. That's what that is. I suppose we could fly over to it, see what it looks like. We're kind of almost even lined up. We could do it. We could do a touch and go. Maybe we'll do that. We don't very often do the, the touch and goes on this simulator. Let's do the, do one of that. 
What of them? What of that? <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Okay, so now that we're nosing down, we're at 170 knots. Let's pull our throttle back, because it's actually screaming at us now. Let's see if we can see this Yorkton Municipal Airport. Okay, so it's a little ways out still. Is that it right there, maybe? Yep, that looks like it right there. Cool, let's do a little touch and go there. Let's get our lights on for landing. Get our flaps angled. Our landing gear is already down. It has been down the whole time. Let's get ready for a... Should we try it? Should we try this? Maybe I will. What's the worst that could happen? Other than, you know, like flip the plane over and we're in the video. That could happen. Oh, that's a nice bright light. Suppose I should get ready with my rudder pedals. Oh, that's neat. That's a cool effect, the front wheel turning when I do the rudders there. Except that front wheel kind of gets in the way of it, doesn't it? <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah, it's actually hard, kind of hard to see what's going on there. That's a little scary, I'm gonna be honest. Floating it. Not bad. A little bit off center, but quite smooth. And we're back up. Okay, I'll be honest, that was substantially smoother than I thought it may, may have been. That went all right. All right, let's get back on course. Get our flaps leveled again and get our landing lights turned off. Well, that was nice. I'm glad that we did that. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. I think our destination airstrip today, uh, what is it now? Kenora Airstrip. It's just a grass runway. It's uh, definitely even less fancy than that one we just did a touch and go at. Just gonna check our fuel here. I just thought of that. Okay, 45%, not bad at all. We're more than, yeah, we're about halfway through. more than halfway through. <laughs> and I think I started us with like 60% fuel or something like that. Well, that's funny. From the outside of the plane, there's two of us. We do have a co-pilot. Oh well. <laughs>
Yeah, as much as I do really like the fighter jets, the supersonic jets, and things like that, it's really nice to fly these light aircraft. They're just really nice for sightseeing. They're quite forgiving as far as, you know, they're not overcomplicated. I do really like them. But I do also, don't get me wrong, I do really enjoy the, the fighter jets, the F-16s, the F-18s, the, the F-22. The F-35 is really growing on me too as well, especially the, the B variant that can fly uh, uh, vertical takeoff and landings. That's pretty cool for sure. Seems like we're drifting a little bit here. Drifting a little bit further east than we should be going. We're heading mostly north today, and I'll be honest, it was just, I did that to squeeze another flight out of Saskatchewan, because I didn't want to cross over into Manitoba yet, and I think we were quite far south in that, uh, we were almost at the uh, American border, and you know, I just don't have clearance to, to cross into U.S. airspace at this point. Not today. One thing that I've known about this simulator that I really hope they fix it sometime is that if I'm uh, if I use the mouse to click and look around like this, anytime I have the mouse clicked, I can't use any of my controls. I can't use my joystick or throttle. None of my switches are active during that time. It's really weird. It's very strange. It's pretty neat looking up here. For white fluffy clouds just floating on top of a blanket. That's very nice. Oh, but on external view, I can use my controls. That's interesting. Yeah, can't use my stick at all right now. Pedals, nothing. <coughs> Pardon me. How are we doing here? We're getting close to our destination. Sort of. It looks less close as soon as I zoom in. See, from back here, it looks like we're almost there. <laughs> yeah, maybe a, a third of the way left to go. Oh yeah, and I went out to the yard today. I meant to, <laughs> yesterday I ate a pepper, I ate a, a Red Reaper on a video, and I was like, oh yeah, talk about the garden as soon as I eat this pepper, but I want to eat this pepper first. And then I ate the pepper and I didn't talk about the garden at all. Um, so I guess I'll talk about the garden now. <laughs> I went out there today and I picked a whole bunch of pods, I'm not even sure, probably, probably about a hundred pods, if I had to guess but the season is definitely winding down. So it's been a, about a week since I picked any peppers, um, and some plants didn't even have a single ripe pe pepper in that time. They were partially ripened back then and still not fully ripened. So in the next couple of days, I know I said this last week, but in the next couple of days, I'm picking everything. Um, our temperature did rise back up, there was one night, I think, was it last night or was it a few nights ago? I forget now, but I really honestly should have picked them. Um, there was some frost for sure, um, but it didn't really affect the peppers because the peppers are co covered by the leaves. So we were okay, okay so far, but I'm really playing with, with fire, so to speak, there because uh, I could have 
woken up to some mushy ponds this morning, or whatever that was, I forget. I'm very lucky that that was not the case. But I'm really keeping an eye on things. I picked everything today, aside from the green ones, and uh, really keep an eye on the weather, keep on top of things. It's nice that I've eaten peppers a few days in a row now, but I just need to keep on top of the garden itself now. It's really easy to get caught up in other things and neglect other areas of the house or yard. I'm gonna have a drink of water, I'm talking too much. Episode 30 of Flying Across Canada. Um, while I th think of it, I'm thinking of it right now, I just want to give a shout out to my buddy, Sim Famous. I really honestly should have checked with him to see if he was available for a flight, but in my mind I assumed he was working, but I really should have checked with him anyway. So I want to give a shout out to Sim Famous because he's awesome. I really appreciate it. Him as a person, you know, as a friend, as a fellow YouTuber, as a simulation user and streamer, uh, musician, a whole, whole, whole bunch of things. I might have even said musician twice in there, I forget. But I really appreciate Sim Famous. Um, gotta go for a flight with that fella again one of these days soon. Make sure you check out their. YouTube channel, Sim Famous. I will link it at the end and uh, in the description box down below. Now we are getting close to our destination now, getting close to Kenora Airstrip. There is no, what do they call it now? Oh, there's no radio there. There's I don't even know if there's any buildings there to be honest. I feel I may have Test flown this I don't quite remember but I don't think it's a, a very official Airport Is there a way? Seeing if there's a way to zoom out on this. Oh, there it is. I see it now. <laughs> I see the airstrip. So we are heading 360, zero degrees. I think that's I think that's north. I think mean, it is dead north. It's literally on a compass. get down below the clouds. It looks like there's a... it's not quite fog, so we will be able to see the air... the airstrip, I believe. I am going to fly past the airstrip, fly over it, and then uh, circle around, just to get an idea of what it looks like. Close. Very close. I suppose I will turn on our landing lights. Maybe angle our flaps. No, what are we at for speed? 164. We're going a little fast here. Actually, let's. There we go. Let's see if we can look forward at it. I don't know what it looks like other than that it's a grass airstrip. We'll zoom this in a little further. It's coming up very soon. Very soon. 
It says we're over top of a lake right now. Is that it right there? I think that's it right there. Yeah, that'd be it. Okay. Angle our flaps. And let's get this thing spun around. Enjoyed this flight. Oops. Foot got caught on the rudder pedal there. <laughs> Got it. And 
I don't think we can open anything up, so you'll just have to, I don't know, <laughs> find a way out. We'll figure it out. But we're here. We are at, oh, how long did that take? 34 minutes. I guess 19 minutes. That was way longer. Our next flight, we're going to fly a MiG-29 Fulcrum to Grand Rapids in Manitoba. Okay, I'm going to climb out of my seat now. <laughs> Let's go see this dog. Oh, that's a pretty accurate timer. 35 minutes on there, so I will need to edit this. That's all right. I always forget how to release this camera because it's a different tripod, and every tripod kind of has a different release mechanism. What is this? But what's this? Hey? What's this? Hi, little dog. Oh, are you so cute? Hey? You got your chirpy burrito? She got that for her birthday last year. Aww. What a poor dog. What's the matter, Maggie? Why don't I get this video wrapped up and you can tell me all about it. Yeah. So I hope you've enjoyed this flight. This was episode 30 of Flying Across Canada. That sounds weird to, he to hear that. 30 episodes of one series. I mean, I guess we have like 402 videos this season. That's pretty cool too. I keep forgetting to mention that. Uh, Heat My Short season three, we're out like 402 videos, I think by now, something like that. It's pretty exciting. Um, I forget all the numbers, but we did like, yeah, 430 videos the first year, 525, I think the second year. I think we'll be somewhere in between that this year. We'll see. <laughs> um, January 6th, I think, is our channel birthday. I almost kind of want to just call it January 1st, just to round down, but I think I'm going to keep it at January 6th. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this video up. In this corner, you'll see our Heat My Shorts logo. In this corner, Sim Famous. Hop over to Sim Famous's channel if you haven't already. Give him a subscribe up here some content for you to enjoy have a great day or night everyone i love you all and we'll hang out again soon i promise this has been heat my shorts with maggie and steve flying by the seat of our shorts heat my shorts <laughs> bye bye